Hi, and uh, welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was given at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on uh, May 18th, uh, 2014. Uh, my name is Don Volt. I'm the pastor at the church, and uh, we're going to be uh, taking a look at, uh, at what the message uh, was about and just, just trying to pull it together in a short form. Uh, behind me, you'll see a, a beautiful uh, uh, cloth that uh, is used over in Ukraine to wrap up a loaf of bread, and then uh, it's presented to someone who's a special guest, and you each tear off a piece of bread and eat it together. And it's a it's a sign of fellowship and uh, and, and acceptance. And uh, so, anyways, uh, I have it up there to remind us to keep praying for the people in Ukraine uh, because they have elections coming up. I believe it is this week, uh, and uh, they are really praying for a good outcome in those elections and that uh, that peace and unity uh, can just be uh, what they have in their country. Okay, so uh, keep on praying for them, and I'd appreciate that. It's my second home. All right, so uh, we're looking at growing in grace, the foundation for a new attitude. And uh, I think all of us have had times in our life when we understand my attitude isn't right. Uh, I need a different attitude. And, and so I, I really want to present uh, what the scriptures talk to us about when it comes to gro growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, as a foundation for, for having uh, the kind of attitude that we're supposed to have. Second Peter 3 uh, verses 10 through 18 says this, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. Okay, so first thing, uh, you know, if we're going to grow in grace, there needs to be a, a motivation, that, you know, for doing so. And uh, the love of Christ, of course, is the, the thing that is supposed to be our greatest motivation. But an understanding that we are accountable. We're accountable for the life that we live. We're accountable for the opinions we hold. We're accountable for uh, our attitudes, okay? And so uh, this, uh, this day of the Lord, you know, is, is, is a powerful time uh, when even for Christians, according to uh, 2 Corinthians 5.10, uh, we all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to be recompensed, to be repaid for the life that was lived in the body, whether it was good or bad. And so uh, there, there's this time, and after that time, uh, the heavens and the earth that we have known are destroyed, and God has created new heavens and new earth in, in which righteousness dwells, and uh, we go to be in that place. All right, so it goes on. It says, since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, the question that's asked is this, what sort of people ought you to be in all uh, holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning, and the elements will melt with intense heat. Uh, but according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom, wisdom given to him, wrote to you, and this is Peter writing about Paul, as also in his, all his letters, speaking in them of things in which some are hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard, so that you are not carried away with the error of unprincipled, that means lawless men, and fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. So, to really live the Christian life, we need to, to keep the day of the Lord in our sight, okay? Because at the point where you're no longer understanding this accountability, this ultimate accountability for the life that we live, we can get to the place where we live pretty carelessly. And so, you know, that is, you know, for, for us as Christians, for you as, as a believer, as somebody who's, who's watching this video and is, is wanting to, to be uh, right in the eyes of God, uh, understand, this is part of what God wants us to know, is the context in which we live the life that we are living. We live in a context that says, in the beginning, uh, it was all created. God gave us breath, and that in the end, we're accountable to God, uh, and that then there's this time uh, where the old place that we lived is burned up, and the new place uh, you know, that we're going to spend eternity is open to us. And so, to, to have that in your mind as you live life, uh, the big question uh, in life is this, since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be? 
okay, in all holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God. Okay, so first of all, you know, the question, and I think that's a question that's appropriate for us to be asking every day. You know, what kind of person should I be? Every circumstance, what kind of person should I be in this circumstance? Because the answer is that I am a representative of Jesus Christ. People who have never met Christ, meeting me as a Christian, as a follower of his, would be right to believe that they are experiencing something of Christ by meeting me. And the question then becomes, how much of, of who I am and what I am uh, is a good representation of Jesus Christ? And, uh, and it's just our, our opinions, okay, that our opinions become the foundation of our attitude, okay? Opinions become attitudes, attitudes become the life that we live, all right? Because how much of the life that we live, we're not really experiencing it as it is, we're experiencing it according to our opinions, uh, you know, you can have two people experiencing the same thing and having very different experiences because of the opinions that they hold in their heart. Those opinions become the foundations for attitudes, and the attitudes become the foundation for the life that we actually live. Okay, so take away the day of the Lord, and again, we tend to live carelessly, but this is what we're told to do instead. Okay, look for and anxiously desire your new home where righteousness dwells. Okay, so we're, we're encouraged that we're supposed to be uh, looking for and anxiously desiring to see the day of the Lord come, you know, that, that we're, we're looking for that, you know, and, and hoping for it each day. All right, make a diligent effort to be blameless, okay? Check your attitude, you know, and that both meanings for that, all right? Uh, check your attitude in terms of checking it out to see what it is, but then also control, check it, okay? Check your attitude, okay? Uh, because uh, making this diligent effort to, to, be, to be blameless, you know, to be blameless, harmless, the children of God, the Bible tells us, all right? Lead yourself to believe that the time of the Lord's patience has a purpose, and that purpose is to allow time for salvation to be worked out in your life, all right? So uh, this uh, leading yourself to believe something, understand, we do it all the time. Lead yourself to believe this, all right, that this time where God is not chastising you every moment for the stuff that you're not messing up, but instead is being patient with you, and that patience is to give you the opportunity for the salvation that Christ purchased for you to be worked into every area of your life. Be on guard against people with the wrong ideas that are going to trip you up. There's a warning given here to, to be aware. You know these things beforehand, so beware. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's talk about that. Okay, growing in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, salvation. Acts 15, 11 says this. Uh, Paul is defending their ministry to the Gentiles, and he says, We believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ in the same way as they also are. Okay, and so uh, that we are saved. Salvation. You know, growing in salvation. Growing in, in the work of salvation in our life. That, that we aren't just saved in the sense of, oh, our sins have been forgiven because we believed, uh, but that that salvation has had a chance to work in our lives. Restoration, 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 14. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, putting me into service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor. This is Paul describing himself. Yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. And to, to understand what Paul is reflecting on here is that, look, I had, uh, I, I was particularly bad. I was somebody that, I, that it's amazing to, to, to Paul that, that God was, was willing to receive him and to, to, to do these things in him. But he said grace was abundant. There was more available to him because he needed more. Uh, goodness and power, 2 Thessalonians 1, 11 through 12, uh, goes on to just say this, that, that, uh, that we should... Uh, fully desire, uh, uh, well, let's just read it, okay. To this end also we pray for you always that God will count you worthy of your calling and fulfill every desire for goodness and the work of faith with power. Okay, and it goes on to say that the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you know, is, is with us and that it's according to these things that we receive the, the, both the goodness and the work of faith with power. All right, growing in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ produces faithfulness. 2 Peter 1.8, neither... Uh, um, Oh, okay, Second Peter 1, let's just read it. Okay, for these qualities, are, if, if they're yours and increasing, they render you that you will be neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, so fruitfulness comes through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Another thing that comes through knowledge is freedom from the foulness and pollution of things in the world. Second Peter 2.20 uh, says that they escape the defilements of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and now. 
and into the day of eternity. Amen. All right, the promise that we live by, and this is the, the, the thing I want to close out with, is this, Philippians 1, 6 through 7, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began this good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ Jesus, okay? And so remember, the opinions that you hold, okay, become the attitudes that you have, and the attitudes you have become the life that you live. And with that, I'm going to say God bless you. We'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.